In a Michigan forest preserve, a story of murder unfolds. The victim, a young woman named Jeanette Kirby, is dragged off a hiking trail and down a ravine. There she is subdued, assaulted, and then stabbed repeatedly. Most unique about this unsolved case, police-style flex cuffs used to bind the victim's hands behind her back. It is a detail that four years later resurfaces with a different victim and in a different place. Dusk approaches and a single woman guns her car down an empty highway. Suddenly she sees a pickup loom in a rear view mirror, then red and white flashers. So I pulled over when I saw the light in the back mirror and I sat there. A man steps out of his vehicle but does not approach the car. The woman, who is asked not to be identified, takes a tentative step towards the man. All of a sudden, he took out a revolver or a gun and said, come here. Then he shot a warning shot into the woods and said again, come here. On the empty highway, the two struggled, the man dragging his victim ever closer to the open door of his pickup. I thought, wait a minute, you are not getting me into this truck. So I held on the front of his truck and at that time, other cars was coming by. Shortly after that happened, he actually threw me on the road and said, get the hell out of here. The man jumps back into his truck and flees. The woman picks herself up off the ground, drives home, and phones police. Sergeant Bert Mead catches the call. She told us he was wearing a baseball cap with a star on it that she thought was uh, affiliated somehow with the law enforcement agency. At the scene, police recover an ejected shell casing from the round fired during the attack. They also make castings of the tire prints. Police track the suspect, a local named David Dram, to his parents' cabin. Dram's truck matches the tire prints found at the scene, and he himself fits the rough description provided by the victim. He was in the home and they asked him if he owned a nine millimeter handgun and he acknowledged that he did and he told them it was hidden under a cushion on the couch and it was later determined to be the one used uh, and matched with the cartridge that was found uh, at the scene. Detectives also search Dram's truck and cabin. They find a police cap similar to the ones described by the victim, as well as a knife and a pair of police style flex cuffs. Detectives placed Dram under arrest for attempted kidnapping. Closing time at Sammy's Lounge. At 2.30 a.m., a waitress makes her way through a deserted parking lot. When she went out to her car, she got in it, started driving it, and she had the thump, thump, thump of a flat tire. Ingham County Prosecutor Sam Smith recounts what happens next. Much to her surprise, there was uh, somebody there to help her. This guy that had been in the bar earlier named David Drahan. He's talking about Dram, who offers the woman a ride to his house and the use of his phone. According to the woman, once inside the house, Dram drops the Good Samaritan routine. He appeared with a gun and a knife in his hand, put the gun and knife to her head and said, you're in trouble now. She was forced back into the bedroom had her get on the, on the bed, took off her clothes, and raped her several times. Afraid for her life, the woman does not come forward with the story in 1989. Seven months later, with Dram already in custody for the attempted kidnap, the woman shares her story with police. Smith adds rape charges to the charges pending against Dram. He is found guilty in both cases and receives a maximum sentence of 80 years in prison. Cold case detectives, however, are still not happy. The flex cuff linked to the Jeanette Kirby murder is too strong to ignore. Twelve years have taken their toll on Muriel Kirby. Twelve years of waiting for a knock on the door or the phone to ring for news that the person who killed her daughter has been arrested. I talked to the sheriff's department several times. 
enough so that they got tired of me. And they said, you know, this is an old case. You can't expect something every day. I did. I expected something every time I called. Larry Harrison is the detective on the other end of Muriel Kirby's phone calls. In the spring of 1986, he worked the Kirby crime scene as a street cop. In 1998, he picks up the cold file as a homicide detective. His partner is Pete Ackerley. The two detectives agree in order to solve this case, they must walk down the road of David Dram's past and turn over every stone along the way. Their walk through David Dram's past brings detectives to the doorstep of a man named Mark Grieco, a man who has been waiting more than a decade to tell his story. In the early 1980s, Mark Grieco was David Dram's roommate. Around the same time, Grieco bought an old police car, one without an FM radio. One day, Grieco decided to install one. I actually had to physically get into the trunk to work underneath the back deck to wire it, and then I saw the uh, plastic bag. It was stuck between like the inner fender and the, and the outer fender, and I pulled it out, and it was a bag of flex cuffs, plastic handcuffs. According to Grieco, he gave eight of the flex cuffs to David Dram, but does not know what Dram used them for. Grieco kept the other two cuffs for himself. I worked for a security guard company at that time, and right in the back window of the car was my uniform hat. And uh, I just pulled a couple out, stuck in them, my hat, and I gave him the rest. Grieco used one of the cuffs to tie up the muffler of a car, but was unsure what he did with the other. At the request of police, Mark Grieco rummages through his closets, looking for the missing cuff. Up in the top of my closet in a plastic bag was that uniform hat, and inside that uniform hat was that flex cuff. I couldn't believe that after 12 years that he still had this one flex cuff in the brim of his old security hat. I knew immediately this could be the link that we were looking for. The cuff provided by Grieco and the one pulled off Jeanette Kirby's body are identical in brand and manufacture. Unfortunately, they are also identical to thousands of other cuffs produced and sold in the United States. Cold case detectives need to find a link between the cuffs, a unique signature that differentiates them from other cuffs in the marketplace. That signature lies not with the plastic cuff itself, but on a small piece of metal embedded inside. Scott Marrier is a forensic tool mark examiner for the state of Michigan. Tool marks can be unique, and a lot of people do equate it to a fingerprint. What happens is during the manufacturing process, um, when, when tools are made, no two objects, uh, it doesn't matter what you're making, are completely identical in every way. And so what I do is I look for the microscopic imperfections that are left on various objects to see you know, if, if these were cut by the same tool. In the summer of 1998, Marrier gets a call asking him to compare the Grieco and Kirby cuffs. Marrier focuses on the small metal tabs used as a locking mechanism for the cuffs and the small scratches found on each tab, tool marks created when the tab was machine cut at the processing plant. These were uh, wonderful tool marks, both in quantity and quality. And it was actually a very easy identification to make between the uh, metal tab that was removed from the, the flex cup that was found on uh, Jeanette Kirby and the one that uh, could be associated to Mr. Dreheim. The state believes the flex cuff evidence, coupled with Dram's prior attacks on other women, make their case. In April 2001, almost 16 years after the fact, David Dram is charged with murder and the death of Jeanette Kirby. The Dram case goes to the jury on June 21st. It comes back three days later. The verdict? Guilty of murder in the second degree. She's had her day in court. Justice has been served. And that's what we've been fighting for for 16 years. David Dram will never have the opportunity to hunt and to kill women again. For the murder of Jeanette Kirby, he received the maximum sentence under Michigan law. Life in prison.